This is the first in the series of William Shakespeare's tragic romances. Antony and Cleopatra is one of the later tragic romance written in 1606. The title of this video is Heavenly Mingled Love in Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. Shakespeare's illustration of Antony and Cleopatra shows what it means to fall passionately in love as well as being heavenly mingled lovers. In contrast to the youthful love of Romeo and Juliet, in Antony and Cleopatra, Shakespeare depicts a couple that embraces the qualities of the East and West by the continuous exchange of love that proves to be of infinite virtue and of infinite variety, two qualities that symbolize Rome and Egypt. In this video, we will look at love or falling in love especially from Mark Antony's standpoint, as a somewhat mixed romantic hero of heavenly mingle exclaimed by Cleopatra herself. She initiated direct and indirect control over Antony, changing and evolving him into a lover as well as a hero. Throughout the play, Antony transmigrates between Romanized Egypt and Egyptianized Rome and we're left to wonder about a new kind of mingled, heroic human being. The word transmigrates, as used by Antony, when asked by his Roman friends what an Egyptian crocodile looks like, is portrayed as such that it is shaped like itself, and it is as broad as it hath breath. It is just so high as it is, and moves with its own organs. It lives by that which nourishes it, and the elements once out of it, it transmigrates. This description of the crocodile virtually sounds like Antony himself. When Cleopatra demands to know, if it be love indeed, tell me how much, Antony answers back saying that he will need new heaven, new earth to express his love for her. Even Cleopatra and Antony did not quite recognize what their feelings were, as these were so new, so different, and so seductive. They had to redefine these new, irresistible emotions of love. Cleopatra was his reality in Egypt, an amazingly intoxicating seductress, decadent, and beyond any women he had ever laid eyes on. Antony felt finally at his emotional home in Egypt, comfortable, able to relax and bathe in the sexual warmth of Cleopatra. The very timing of Heavenly Mingle cannot be overlooked, as Cleopatra had once been Julius Caesar's mistress, admitting herself as being immature then. My salad days, when I was green in judgment, cold in blood. Indeed, the part played by a more grown-up Cleopatra in terms of sexuality and maturity contributed greatly to Antony becoming a romantic lover. Antony was, undoubtedly, one that loved not wisely, but too well. It is true that Cleopatra brings out both wild masculinity and passionate sexual appetite in Antony because she is made of them too. Her cocket desires suited Antony and made each other incredibly compatible. As Juliet exclaims when she falls in love with Romeo, My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. The more romantic Antony becomes, the more love Antony can give to Cleopatra, a woman of infinite variety. And although it is Cleopatra who says Antony has infinite virtue as he dies, at last, the two infinite lovers are mingled heavenly. The lengthy dying scene perhaps indicates Shakespeare's sympathy and even a tribute to the two star-crossed lovers, where the two utterly different worlds, two quite different people fell in love and took their love story with them in death. Antony and Cleopatra were fortunate and misfortunate to have lived in such turbulent times. There will always be controversies and historical Antony and Cleopatra, Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, and our own Antony and Cleopatra, as one of the most attractive 
lovable romantic protagonists. From the passionate yet calculated funeral oration in Julius Caesar, Mark Antony had evolved into a passionate yet magnanimous lover of Cleopatra. He had expanded his ethos from a loyal Roman hero to an affectionate, giving and embracing lover. As Antony lay dying, an unknown soldier exclaims that the star has fallen. And when Cleopatra dies, her attendant cries, O Eastern Star. Rome and Egypt have finally lost their stars. Antony was Shakespeare's vicarious thrill and satisfaction of recreating a romantic hero that transcends time and space. Despite the tragic ending of Antony and Cleopatra, at least for them, death was probably only of this life, not an end, but the beginning of eternal love. <laughs>